was July 2000. I was sitting in my office in uh, New York City when I accepted a job at the UN uh, in Kosovo, in the Balkans. <laughs> From the outside, uh, there was no reason for me to look for a job uh, overseas. I had a life that many people would envy. I had just, after uh, law school, I had just completed a master's degree from Tulane University, passed the New York bar exam in my first try, practiced law in a maritime law firm in New York, um, had a five-year work permit, so set to become naturalized in the US and move up to a legal career ladder. Um, today, I'm no longer living in the US, have not been naturalized, and no longer practice law. I choose a totally different uh, destiny. So tonight I want to talk to you about that choice uh, that brought me to the work I do with vulnerable groups, which taught me a lot about uh, civics. Led me to a campaign that increased, about, uh, that increased awareness about sexual violence in Turkey, uh, and it all started with a choice I made, which ended up defining who I am, what I do in life, and overall transformed me to someone who is engaged with society. And this is my uh, message tonight. Now, let me go back to New York City. And you can see on the left, me and my sister. I'm sitting in that office where I accepted the job. And uh, on the right, you can see my mother and her husband on the day of uh, me swearing in, in uh, at the New York bar. So um, I, I basically accepted the job in Kosovo. And you can see some pictures uh, from uh, Kosovo um, with friends and one in front of a train that we managed to bring in from uh, Norway to uh, Kosovo. So I accepted the job in uh, Kosovo because it was becoming clear to me that I did not go to law school to deal with people's ships and containers. I had dreams when I went to law school. I had to pursue them. It was also obvious that I was not made for being an attorney, whether in Turkey uh, or not. So, I joined Istanbul Bilgi University, and thereafter, soon, uh, I uh, started my PhD. And thanks to the uh, vision and support of the university, I was able to pioneer two access to uh, justice projects. The first was the establishment of uh, legal clinics, whereby law school students, basically my students, uh, provide public legal education to inmates in prison, in the prisons of uh, Istanbul. And the second was the establishment of a pro bono clearinghouse that connects NGOs in Istanbul with law firms uh, in Istanbul. Through this network, NGOs can obtain free legal advice while law firms can fulfill uh, their social, social responsibility. When I started working on these uh, projects, legal clinics, as well as pro bono, um, more than 10 years ago, both were alien concepts, and everyone thought I was crazy for trying to establish these things in Turkey. Uh, and I'm proud to say today they are in the strategic plans prepared by the Ministry of Justice, who is championing them, and while trying to spread them all over the country. Um, providing legal education to inmates uh, requires going to prison for weekly, uh, for nine weeks, and teaching for two hours at each visit. I'm sorry, I cannot really provide you a picture from the prison because you cannot take pictures inside the prison. Our curriculum consists of subjects that are relevant for the life of an inmate. They range from family to basic uh, rights and liberties to consumer law and corrections. And in order to evaluate my students' teaching and monitor them, I spend a lot of time uh, in prison with them. Um, you should be aware uh, that the number of people in prisons has increased more than threefold in Turkey in a time period of 10 years. And um, this is set to continue until we hit 350,000. So you bet this is our new issue in the coming years, the swelling uh, prison population. And <clears throat> you can see here the type of crimes uh, that they have been uh, convicted of. 
and we're uh, working with almost all of these uh, people. Um, it costs, uh, according to the uh, 2015 figures, it costs uh, 20,000 liras to keep one person in jail per year. 20,000 liras. The financial costs notwithstanding, the social costs of incarceration is huge for families and communities as America is finding out and reversing its long policy of mass incarceration. And given the high recidivism rates, I mean reoffending rates, it's not even money well spent. 70% of inmates go back to prison within three years of their release. The prison is a total control institution. You cannot exercise much judgment in any area of your life. Even the number of shirts you can have is regulated. The number of uh, visits you can have, the number of minutes you can uh, talk on the phone, they are all decided. While a lo lot of reform has been going on in Turkey in prisons, overcrowding remains the biggest problem. So in this state of affairs, teaching law for inmates to provide access to, legal, uh, to the legal system becomes crucial. Our goal is to empower them through knowledge of legal, legal rules, so during their time in prison and thereafter, when they run into problems, they try to solve them through legal means and not by rioting or fighting. When we first started, inmates directed their anger, cynicism, and frustration with the legal system to us. They did not believe in the law. It was something punitive for them. They were unable to understand, also, why my upper middle class students would go to prison for two hours on a weekly basis to teach them law. Were we spying on them? Were we working for the government? However, once we gained their confidence and they tried, they understood what we tried to do, they took us to their hearts. As you can see, I have all these bracelets that they have uh, made for me. And uh, similar suspicions were at play in the pro bono clearing house. NGOs could not comprehend why corporate lawyers would want to provide free legal advice for them. And given the lefty background of many of the NGOs, weren't these actually firms who were acting in the evil capitalist world? Were they trying to market themselves by doing pro bono activities? No matter what I said to, re to reassure inmates or, only, uh, or NGOs, only working with them and learning from them about issues of poverty, incarceration, and violence against women, I could gain their confidence. I spent lengthy times with my students and without my students in prison. I had to build trust with the prison administration and correction officers. I had countless meetings with NGOs and law firms. Doing a PhD in politics helped me immensely uh, as it gave me the theoretical background for understanding how civic action, associability, and levels of social trust were intertwined. As Alexis de Tocqueville said in Democracy in America, the science of association is the uh, mother of science. I learned to engage people bottom-up and build relationships. Trusting them first was the only way to earn their trust. I came to see what the law meant in the eyes of the vulnerable. I learned that just because someone offended or came into conflict in one area of law, it did not follow that he had to fall into conflict in other areas. Law was a social good just like health, and everybody had a right to benefit from it. Today, uh, the Legal Clinic is the longest program that have been running in the prisons of Turkey. Hundreds of male and female part uh, inmates participated in it, sometimes more than once. Once they are transferred to other prisons, they spread the uh, knowledge. The prison staff is happy, they understand what we do and endorse it because they have seen that it contributes to a positive atmosphere in pr prison. And my students learn that the law is not like in the books that they read, and inmates learn that the law is not only out there to get you, law protects also. Uh, law confers you uh, also rights. I get thank you letters from inmates saying they feel like citizens again. And uh, they make, uh, for students and me, handmade uh, keychains. They even wrote a rap song for me. So. <laughs> 
Similarly, when an NGO uh, today, an NGO activist meets a lawyer in a, a plaza, they no longer feel intimidated but uh, uh, empowered. So, as you can see, my choice led me to develop ties between various vulnerable groups in society. It contributed to an understanding of social action as well as empowerment through the law. So, when in February 2015, we woke up to the horrible murder of Özgecan Aslan in Turkey, who was attempted to be raped before being brutally murdered, all this engagement, coupled with being an active Twitter user, culminated into an online activism that caught everyone by surprise. And here, it's, uh, here is how it started. You can see on the left-hand side uh, the first tweets um, I put up there and uh, the English translations. When I wrote these uh, first tweets, I sensed that uh, we as women had enough of sexual harassment. Still, we kept it to ourselves. We didn't really talk about it. So I wanted to encourage women to talk about the issue and to make the problem visible in society. I also wanted women to see that they were not alone. Many women were victims of sexual harassment. And inspired by uh, everyday sexism and Aufschrei in Germany, which are similar uh, ideas as Sanda Annat, I choose a simple hashtag. Uh, which translates as tell your story. In over four days, there were 300,000 original tweets. With retweets, it reached about a million. And women still write under the hashtag. Um, and you can see that the people were tweeting all over Turkey, and it wasn't only one spot. All this basically not only turned into an awareness-raising exercise about sexual harassment, but also into a group therapy for women. The tweets show that the harassment problem was not confined to public transportation where Özgecan was murdered. School, street, work, hospital, family, the police were all mentioned by women as venues of harassment. And it was happening to all women, regardless of ethnicity, religiosity, class, or education. Ever since Sanda Anlat, we see increased societal reaction to sexual harassment. There are more and more requests for removal of sexist ads from circulation. I would like to think that Sanda Anlat made a difference, thanks to all women. So, why am I sharing this? all of this with you. First, to tell you to choose to pursue your dreams. Do not waste time with a career that you do not want. Take risks. Second, raise your children in a way that allows them to make their own choices. If I did all of this today, it is because my parents raised me as an individual who can stand on her feet and, can, and make her own choices. Third, engage in society and civic action. I see a lot of people around me who are well-educated, who speak languages, earn well, travel well, live well. They work hard to buy a house or a car or save for the education of their children. They worry about the political and social problems of this country. But they do not pause and ask themselves what kind of society they want and what they can do to achieve it. Disengagement from society and looking down upon society is almost a given. As if one can create an oasis of personal happiness detached from society. As Hannah Arendt reminds us, wealth without power is parasitical. If we do not engage society, we lose ties with it. We do not think about the values we stand for. We do not have the opportunity to uphold them. Now, this talk is about choices, and I do not expect anybody to make my choices. What I would like you to do is to at least try to build to building a road to society. It does not have to involve inmates, <laughs> NGOs, or other vulnerable groups. But take a step, even a small one, and learn from the experience. Society will reward you with a response or a lesson to think about. In that sense, at the cost of sounding alien to your corporate ears, in civic matters, it is the process and not the outcome that counts. Therefore, it does not matter whether you succeed or not. Build your own network. Build your own cause. 
bring like-minded people together, engage the city, the neighborhood, the school, make together an activity, speak about a subject that you are passionate about. You will be surprised by the number of people who will join your cause. You will see how this will transform you in so many ways. It will not only tie you to society, but make you understand power and how to build it by working it with others. In sum, make the choices that will create the society you want to live in. My choice led me to a career that is full of battles that can sometimes be depressing, but it also rewarded me with a sense of direction and an opportunity to create social change. Thank you.